Um, but we've got a worksheet that I want you guys to work through, so we'll spend a lot of time on that. We do have a few things we want to go over. The first is the development of the brain structures, right? So embryonically, your brain starts, uh, starts out as just a cluster. Yeah, thanks. Uh, a cluster of cells that then forms a tube, and then they swell into these divisions called brain vesicles. Okay, and um, basically they lobulate, make these lobes, and then those then divide again, and then those then specialize into different parts of the brain. And so the different, they all end in the same suffix, which is encephalon. Okay, so just for brevity, we'll just write their prefixes next to all the different ones. So the first three that we have are called the prose encephalon. the mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon. <clears throat> All right, and the, the mesencephalon actually doesn't divide much from there, and that is your midbrain. So your midbrain is your tectum and um, your tegmentum, which are just a small part of your brain. But the other two divide into larger and further subdivisions. So the prosencephalon divides into the telencephalon and the diencephalon. And the telencephalon becomes the largest part of your brain, which is the cerebrum, right? Your cerebral hemisphere. <laughs> okay? The diencephalon then becomes um, the large cluster of nuclei kind of in the middle of your, of, of your brain, which includes the thalamus, hypothalamus, Epithalamus, anything with thalamus in it. And also the pituitary gland is in there as well. You also have this structure. Um, just accessory to that, you can see it out over here. This is the eye cup or the octic cup, which eventually becomes your retina of your eye. So this is something that has central nervous system origin, but then migrates away from it and becomes an accessory structure to the brain. And that's just the little like, Yes, this little guy here. All right, you good? Okay, the rhombencephalon then divides into the metencephalon, and the myelencephalon. This is different than the myelin sheath, which has an eye in it. Well, the myelencephalon becomes 
the medulla oblongata, which as you all know is the center for aggressive behavior. You're Just wrong. kidding. <laughs> Colonel Sanders was wrong, right? <laughs> the medulla oblongata is for like breathing and reflexes. Nothing to do with anger. Despite what that documentary may have told you. <laughs> okay? Um, the metencephalon then splits into two structures, the cerebellum, which in the adult brain is about 10% of the brain, so a large structure in the brain, and the pons. So if you were to then write these structures on this more subdivided um, embryonic brain, you'd put the telencephalon here. That's going to become your cerebrum. Your diencephalon here. Mesencephalon there. Metencephalon here. And the myelin cephalon there. So some, sometimes these, um, these terms will be, will be thrown around with the structures. So to understand what <coughs> you know, people are talking about in, in those um, in that context, it has to do with their embryological uh, regional development. Is myelin spelled M-Y-E? Yes, M-Y-E-L-E-N. Or like M-Y-E-L and then it's the M-Y-E-L. Oh yeah, you're right. So we could just put M-Y-L. All right, um, we got, okay, so one, this is just wanted to do, to go over different regions of the brain. So a big part of today, of today's material is, I know you guys know where the different structures are on the brain, because we just got tested on that, right, last week. But now what are the functions of these different parts? Okay, so just kind of like what we did with the muscles and the bones. Um, we want you to detail, you know, anatomically, what are, where are all these structures, and then what is their function. So an activity to kind of get into that is, if you go to the Wikipedia page, pray, ugh, Wikipedia page, thank you, Blake, on, um, on what they did with Einstein's brain after he died. They dissected it, cut it up into a bunch of different pieces, and then they lost it for a while, and then they found it again, and then they did some more studies on it. So what I want you to do is read through the studies they did and um, look at the anatomical differences when comparing Einstein's brain and a normal brain, and then we'll outline what some of those differences were, or at least what they think they found. Activity.